we started our trip at Jacksonville International Airport, where we flew to Atlanta, got something quick to eat, and then jumped on our next flight headed to Los Angeles, only to find out when we got there that our luggage would not be following us to the Philippines. But that was no problem. We continued on our trip to Taiwan, and then after that, we got on Cebu Pacific to head to Cebu, Philippines, and then our final stop would be Davao. We were then taken to the Lim family Christmas party, where we enjoyed a lot of food, a great time of fellowship, uh, gifts were exchanged, and then of course we had the Scissor Paper Rock Championship of the World. It was a great time of fellowship. From the Christmas party, we jumped in a van and headed towards the southern part of Mindanao, uh, way out in the countryside. It was very mountainous and uh, actually quite beautiful. After about three and a half hours, we uh, made it to the home of Pastor Rodell, who is the pastor of Amazing Grace Baptist Church. Uh, here we received amazing hospitality we spent the night there and started looking forward to all the excitement that lied ahead for us over the course of the next week. That excitement started with uh, a motorcycle ride. This motorcycle had a sidecar on it and uh, this is how they roll in the Philippines. Everything was packed on top and inside of this along with me. And uh, by the way, these are not made for people that are six feet tall. We rode through the countryside and uh, it was really quite enjoyable all the way to the camp which just so happened to be the place where the Tebos started their orphanage and did their Philippine ministry. As soon as we got there we saw that the church groups were each practicing for a competition that would take place later in the week. A pre-selected hymn was chosen and each of the church groups would sing it and of course the one who was recognized as the best got the title for the year. Glory in the highest, peace on earth, Look to men. peace on earth, and peace on earth, Look to men. peace on earth, the Savior is born. Others were setting up their camp and getting ready for all of the fun and festivities that we would enjoy over the course of the next week. And then there were others who were making new friends and trying out new things and uh, getting themselves settled as well. Something that none of us could have foreseen or predicted though was that this camp would be much bigger than the one the previous year. And amazingly enough, the pump that supplied water for everyone was only working at 40% capacity. There would be no long hot showers over the course of this next week. As a matter of fact, for me and Emily both, this was our sink, shower, and toilet for the entire week. One bucket of water between the two of us every day. Many others would go down to the river and take a bath in the recently muddied up waters from the heavy rains. But we knew we weren't coming to the Philippines for a week-long spa treatment. We came to share Jesus. And the Lord most certainly assembled quite a crowd to receive what we were bringing. On the first night, there were over 700 kids there. And that number would nearly double by the end of the week. These kids would come from nearly every direction, and God only knows from how far away, to be encouraged and to grow spiritually. But how in the world are you going to do that without a Bible? No problem. Guess what? You guys provided Bibles for almost every one of these kids. They're holding them up here and thanking us for the blessing that we've been to them. And every morning, these kids would get up before the sun rose. And they would come out of the tents that they had just put up. And they would gather in little groups and pods all over the property. A piece of property smaller than the piece of property that we have church on today. 
and they would gather and they would open up the new Bibles that they had received and they would read to each other. And the, their leaders would lead them in Bible study and they'd pray. And they would do this every single morning for the entire week. They would go over what was discussed the night before. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. They would pray for the night to come. Uh, the life that you given upon us, Lord God, uh, you extend him a life for us. And Lord God, at this moment, Lord God... And something else that I noticed that was really neat is that as I went around from group to group and was capturing video for what I knew would ultimately be part of this presentation, it dawned on me that none of these kids were looking at their watches None of them were sending text messages or checking out their social media. These kids only had one thing on their mind, and that was just how close could they get to Jesus. How does something like this happen? Well, it's not by accident. There were over 72 different churches represented there, and their pastors, when asked the questions, why do you do this? And what are your biggest blessings? They all basically said the same thing. They do this because they grew up and they experienced this themselves. They all played a major part in these camps today because of the experiences they had as young people. Some even said that they were saved in a camp just like this. And now because of what God had done in their lives when they were just young kids. They now devote all their time and effort towards making an event like this possible for the generations to come. Part of this uh, group since when I was a child, when I was a young people, mm -hmm. and I've been saved through these activities. And then when I became a pastor, of course my passion is to support my young people. Sure. So therefore, uh, one of these motivations for the young people, in order for them to grow spiritually, mm -hmm. it is a good motivation. They can uh, have more friends, they can encounter more uh, about lectures. So mm -hmm. I believe in, uh, in spiritual growth, that mm -hmm. would be helpful to them. This was the story of every single pastor, every single adult youth worker, every chaperone that came on this trip. It was actually even the story of a group of kids that had come with no adult, no pastor, them and their cousins and brothers and sisters packed up all their stove, their food, everything they would need over the course of the week and came on their own to be a part of this camp because they wanted to learn more about the Lord. Because my heart is for Jesus, uh -huh. and I want to help the young tens to, uh, to hear, to, mm -hmm. to know the, the, yes, the, the Lord God. It was this heart and this passion that I believe the Lord saw. It was these prayers that I believe the Lord answered. And by the last night, there were over 1,300 kids in attendance. And on the last night, even their parents showed up. And even in the midst of this, when the invitation time came, kids walked forward and asked Jesus into their heart. What a wonderful week it was. And as quick as it all came together, everybody packed up and went home. Trucks and cars, buses, motorcycles, bicycles, people leaving on foot. They packed up not only the bamboo huts they slept in, but all their personal belongings, their food, their pots, pans, forks, knives, spoons, everything. They packed it all up and went back to where they came from. We were all very tired by the end of this week, but we were also very confident of the fact that God used us in a mighty way. He used us by bringing us all together, equipping us and encouraging us through his word. And then he sent us on our ways back to our churches, our neighborhoods, and our schools to share with them what we had experienced here. It was an amazing experience. 
we made wonderful new friends and enjoyed a time together that we will not forget. We left the place encouraged and filled with joy. The joy of knowing that God's purpose is being fulfilled. The joy of knowing that God's purpose includes us. It includes every single person that prayed for this trip before it took place. Every person that dropped a dollar in the plate to pay for the Bibles that these kids received. Every single person that had anything to do with the planning of this trip, God used it in a wonderful way. He multiplied it like loaves and fish and poured it out as immeasurable blessings on these people. What a wonderful week it was and what a wonderful thing it was to be a part of it. God's purpose is clear and what a blessing it is to be involved in it. Let us all work and strive even harder, all the more to do all that we can with all that God has entrusted to us to see his purpose and plan come to pass, to reach those who are hungry to hear him, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, to go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that his house might be filled, that his message will go out so that he will be known.